What's up everyone? Welcome back to another video. My name is Joe and this is Hard and Hustle Printing. All right, so in this video, I'm gonna take you through the full process of printing a shirt, right? Or printing a bunch of shirts on the Anatole Thunder. So the customer sent me their file. It's a PNG file. It's kind of rough. So I'm gonna show you how I fixed that to make it a vector um, in Adobe Illustrator. And then after we do that, I'm gonna put the image into Corel Draw where I have a plugin to where I can separate the colors very easily. And then after we do that, I will print them off on the Canon Pixima 68 20 I think that's what it is a lot of people ask me if I have a rip software to make it really black I don't it's whatever whatever I'm using is what I'm using I just went with the, the settings and made it really dark and I have no problems with it but whenever it comes to burning the screens and washing them out we'll speed through that process but if you're interested in another video that I did on that process I'll put it up here all right so all right, and then after we do that, we're going to line this job up so that we can get it started, all right? So if you're interested in seeing what's going to happen, what we're going to do right now is we're going to jump into the computer screen so I can show you exactly how I do it. So if you're interested, let's go. So here we are in CorelDRAW and what I'm going to do next is I'm going to grab my image and I'm going to drop it into CorelDRAW. So I'm going to drop it in just like this. All right. so um, with this image that we are working with here, if you look at the actual size of the image, it's actually a pretty good PNG file, right? So 4091 by 4091. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to resize this. Then we're going to zoom into it. All right, so here's our image right here. But if you look, whenever we really zoom into this, you're going to see again that there is a lot of pixelation going on, but it's not too bad. All right, so since it's so pixelated, what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete this image. We're going to drop it into um, Adobe Illustrator and redo it there so we can image trace it and turn it into an actual vector. So we're doing 13 by 19. All right, and then we're gonna bring our file back up. We're gonna simply just drag it back into this. All right, so once we have our image, we can zoom out so we can get it to fit in here. Hold down Shift so that you can get it to be the size that you need it. Drag it where you want. All right, so once you get into place, we're gonna zoom into the picture again. And if you look again, you can see the pixels that are in there, right? When we zoom in really close, right? So what I'm going to do to fix this is I'm going to click the image, come up here to where it says image trace, click it. It's going to do its thing. And it turned it into a black and white picture, right? We want to get this blue and purple back. So what we're going to do is we're going to come over here to the right where it says black and white. You're going to hit that change it to color let it do its thing again and if you look over here to the right while it's doing that um, you could do colors 0 to 30 of them it defaults to 30 colors um, and then we're gonna just change that so there's not so many colors in there but um, I think even with it saying 30 once we put it into Corel draw and we find the colors that are in the actual picture it's not going to be 30 of them so we're going to let this finish up we'll change this to we'll see three four colors and see what it does all right so here we are we have our purple our blue and our black so if you look over here like I said 30 we'll move this down to four let us do its thing again so what this is doing is whenever it finishes doing this, it's going to turn it into an actual vector file. And whenever we zoom into it, it's not going to have none of the distortion or none of the pixelation that we had in the beginning. All right, so there it is. We have four colors. It's only three. Um, we got this blue, this purple, the purple and the blue and the black. Three colors. Um, it's probably a different tint in these blues down here, but whenever we go to separate these colors in Corel Draw, um, what's going to happen is we could change all these colors to what we want. Right? So, right, so the next thing we want to do is we want to ignore white. So I'm going to move this over. 
I'm going to show you what it looks like right now. Right, so if I put this in, it's always going to have this border box around here. But if you come right here to advance, come down here to ignore white, what it's going to do is it's going to do this thing one more time. And there it is. So what it does is it takes out the white background, right? So now we're just going to drop it back over here. Leave it just like that. And then last thing you have to do is to turn it into a vector, you have to hit expand. Whenever you do that, it's going to do its thing one more time. And it's going to put nodes all over this thing. And I'll show you what that looks like here in a second. All right, so there it is right there. Now you're going to see if I zoom into this right here. You're going to see this line does not distort, say, stays perfectly straight. Right? That's what we want. Um, no matter where we zoom on this, you're going to see perfectly straight lines. Then you just want to look at your letters, make sure that they look good, they didn't distort or anything like that. Um, whenever it comes to changing, doing an image trace, it could mess them up. All right, so let me show you what I'm talking about nodes. So if you come over here and you click this, you're going to see all of these little dots. Those are your nodes that turn this into a vector. So we are good. We're going to save this image. We're going to come here. I'm going to come here and name it T. I'm going to save it as a SVG file. All right. So once I do that, we're going to save it. And then we're going to go ahead. We're going to bring Corel Draw back up. And here's our file right here. So this is what an SVG file looks like. Um, I've sent these files to people before, and they're like, what is a Edge HTML document? That's what it is. Just click it, and it'll open up as an SVG. All right, so once we got our image in here, we're going to come over here to Advanced Tools, which is a plugin uh, that I have for Corel Draw. So you come over here, you click this, go to Advanced Tools, come to this first one. These are all different stuff that you can purchase um, from Advanced Tools. The only one that I have is, I think, these first three right here. So I'm going to be using simple steps in this video right here. So what this does is it makes it, takes all the guesswork away from um, separating colors through Photoshop or whatever else programs you're using. Um, this right here does all of that for you. So we're going to come to color management. If I click create selection palette, this is what it's going to tell me, right? Please select an object in which you would like to create a palette. Before you can do that, you have to actually click the image and then click this up here, all right? So once you got that, um, these are our three colors. So there we are, separated it just like that for us. And so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come to this drop down and I'm going to click fills and outlines. I'm just going to come in here and make sure that I have the darkest black that I can get. I'm going to come here to this blue. But when I do the blue, because the blue and the purple are so close in color, I'm going to change this to a light blue. All right, and then I'm going to come to the purple, click it, make sure your image is still clicked, replace it, and then we're going to come to a purple. It's all the way to the top. We're okay. We're good. All right, so our image is now good like this. So the good thing about this is you could change these colors to whatever you want. So if you want to do this, and it's black and you want to replace it and do it let's say red you just come in here click it and it'll change it red so all right but we're going to do it black so we're going to come in here click that click the image replace bring it down to black and there it is again right all right so the next thing we we'll do is we're going to come to separation i'm um, here we can put the registration marks that are in the program so we're going to use those we're going to generate an underbase. We don't need an underbase because we're doing it on white. But if we wanted to, all we had to do is just click that right there. And then whenever laying your underbase, you could pick a choke. So you have all these different options to pick right here. Um, your half tones, whatever you want to pick, right? So then um, you can enhance the white. You come down here. If you're doing half tones, this is what John was talking about in the, the last video if you guys watched it. Um, if you have that RIP software to do it, here it is it's all done for you right here all right so you can pick what type of half tones you want you can do all that we're leaving it at none and we are basically done what we're going to do now is we're going to hit generate separations and it's going to do that for us 
All right, so there it is. So if you look down here towards the bottom, it says two of four right here. So we go to one, it's gonna show us our original image. We're not gonna print that. We go to two, there is our blue. Two is the blue, three is the purple, four is the black. Registration marks are all already there. So then all we have to do is take it and go print it. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go out here to the Canon Pixima and get ready to print this. So, so a lot of people have questions about the printer that I use and if you need to use a RIP software or something to make it darker. Nope, I don't use anything like that with this that I'm using right here. I don't have to use any special kind of program to make the ink darker. So we're gonna go out there to the Canon Pixima and we're gonna print these films right now. So let's go. A lot of people have asked me what I use. This is what I use whenever I print my screens. The link for this will be down in the description if you guys want to look it up or you're interested in buying one of these. All right, so here is the film that I use. I use the 13 by 19. One side is the print side, one side is the slick side. Whatever side is the slick side is the side you don't print from. So make sure you print the right side. If you want to know, you can always get your finger wet and then whenever you touch it, it will look white just like that. All right, so whatever side does this right here is the side that you want to print from. All right, so here's the inks that I use right here. And since I started using this machine, I have not bought any more refills. So this is the first box that I'm still using um, since I started screen printing. So look this up. It's pretty cheap, 20 or 30 bucks for all these inks. All right, so we're going to stick, all right, so we're going to stick our film in here with the techie side facing this way. And then whenever you have your image up and you're ready to print, just hit print. All right, so here we are right here. Here is the black film. Here's the blue and the purple. All right, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna speed through this process. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna get this job completely set up. But if you're interested in the full process of how to put emulsion, burn your screens, wash out your screens, and align your job, I will put a teaser up above. And what that will do is it'll take you to a video where I went ahead and did that whole process. So if you have time, make sure you go and check out that video. All right, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna put on some music. You guys know me, I always play the same two songs. I do that because I hate looking for royalty-free music um, over and over and over, right? So I just have like a little library of two or three songs and I'll throw those songs in there every single time. So we're gonna go ahead and speed through this. So here we go. Why do I have test sheets on here? I have test sheets on here because what I don't want is for my screen to stick to the double-sided PMI tape, right? So as I'm getting them ready, I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna use this right here, like I said, so it doesn't stick to it. Um, everybody has their own ways of doing things. This is the way I do it, all right? So um, if you have a different way of doing it, leave a comment down below and let me know how you do it with the double-sided PMI tape on there. Maybe you could put a shirt over it. Depends on what you want to do. I use the Pellon sheets in case I get it dirty like this. I don't have to worry about getting a t-shirt dirty, right? Because it happens. All right, so what we're going to do now is we're going to turn on our lasers. We're going to load our screen. One thing I don't like about the registration marks in simple steps is they're so big like this. You guys can see that. I don't like that. 
If you guys remember the last print that we did in the last video, they were nice and thin and matched up perfect with these lasers. Um, I used these because they were in simple steps. I used these because they were in the program when I did it and I didn't want to mess with it, right? All right, so as you can see, one thing that is really good about these side clamps is you can stick it in here and then you can just move it around to wherever you need to put it. You don't have that back clamp in the back where you can put it in there and if you're off, you have to go back here and mess with these right here. All right, so one thing I do when I put my screen here is I take the off contact and I make it to basically zero, right? Um, and the reason I do that is because so I can have the same print on all three of them, right? So I'm going to put all of them to zero off contact. I'm going to line it up the way I, that I want. I'm going to get it exactly how I want it. Once I get it how I want it, I'm then going to tighten it down. So I like the way this looks and the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the back and I'm going to do some off contact. Is Whenever it comes to off contact or adjusting any of this stuff here, you don't need any tools, right? Knobs, you loosen them, you adjust it. So same thing with this one. We're going to come in here, we're going to set our off contact to where we want it. Once we like it, we're going to spin this bottom one. We are going to tighten this bottom one and it will lock that one in place. All right, so now that I showed you how I set up the first one, the next two I'm just going to put in there. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to come over here. I'm going to grab this one. I'm going to put it in here. I'm not going to, I'm not going to line it up. I'm just going to put it in here around where it's supposed to be. All right, I'm going to put that one in there. I'm going to come over to the next one. I'm going to grab my black screen and I'm going to put this one in here also. So I got all of them in here where I want them. This is just an estimate of where I want it, right? All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back to my first print. I'm going to print this first one. And then whenever I move this one out of the way, I can then bring this one and line this one up with that print. After I get done with this one, I can line this one up with both of those over there. All right, so I'm going to be using PMI tape only on this screen, only because it goes a little bit out here here and as you can see over here um, what I don't want to happen is for ink to go down here and then get on the shirt so I use PMI tape just like this so that I can protect anything from getting on the shirt All right so as you can see right here I have a gap and right here I have a gap that's okay my squeegee is gonna come here and I'm gonna put it back over here um, the ink's not gonna run super fast and go over there all right, so as you guys can see, I didn't put any PMI tape up here, right? And that's perfectly fine. If you want to, go for it. Put whatever you want up there, right? What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna flood it from the bottom to the top. I'm gonna stop at this registration mark and then I'm gonna print it, right? If you have a habit of coming and going all the way to the top, then yeah, cover this up here. All right, so now we have our screens on there. We are gonna go ahead and get ready to start laying down some ink, all right? So we're going to put this one on here. This is our test sheet. All right, so now that we have our screens on there, we're going to use our test sheet. We're going to bring it back just like this right here. We're going to go ahead and smooth it on there. All right, and then if you look back here, you can see the double-sided tape, right? So if I were to come in here and print this and come all the way down here for some reason, and this sticks to the double-sided PMI tape, this is what's going to happen. That's going to happen every single time. So whenever we put shirts on here, this ain't going to matter. But right now while we're doing our test print, to avoid that, I use a second test sheet and I put it just like that. All right, so if you're interested in these sheets right here, you can find them in the link below. You can order them white like this for whenever you're printing light garments, or you can order them dark like this if you're printing on black t-shirts. All right, so again, the link for these, will be down in the description. All right, so one of the colors that we're putting on here is purple. I don't have purple in stock right now, so we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna add the two colors together and we're gonna make our own purple. So let's go ahead and do that.
right so there is our purple make sure you mix enough to do whatever size order you're doing so you don't have to make it again and come out with a different shade um, but that's it we just mix the blue and the red together it makes violet but the more blue you add the more purple it gets so we're gonna print this on a shirt see how it looks send it to the customer and see if they like it so now that we got all our ink on here we're gonna go ahead and do our first print see how it looks start off with our blue There's our blue. I'm gonna give it a quick flash. Not... All right, so whenever I do that, I just give it a quick flash because I don't wanna do it too long because I didn't put no palette glue on here. So this thing right here, as you can see, will start curling up on you. All right, so don't do it too long because it might move up, All right? So, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna bring around our next color, which is going to be the purple, right? So what I'm gonna do is this off contact. I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna lower it again all the way down so that I can line up this um, this screen right here. So I'm gonna zoom you guys in here so you can see what I'm doing. All right, so I'm just gonna loosen these back up. I'm going to, all right, so now that we have this all the way down, we're gonna go ahead and loosen these. So that's what makes side clamps a whole lot better than this back one, is because you couldn't do this if you were using it in the back. All right, so we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna put this how we want it, line up our two colors, Once you have them, once you have it exactly where you want it, I think we're good right there. We're gonna go ahead, we're gonna tighten this back up. Before we print it, we're gonna look at it one more time. We're good. We're gonna go ahead and set our off contact again. All right, now that we have our off contact, we're gonna tighten the back one so that it doesn't move. We're gonna do our print. So this is the purple that we made. So let's see how it looks. All right, so there's our purple. Eh, not too, not too uh, happy with that purple. Kind of looks black to me, but we're gonna flash it, see how it looks. Quick flash again, and we'll bring it back to where we're at. So, I think it's kind of dark, but we'll see. So we're going to go ahead. Don't forget, I almost forgot. You got to set this one up now. So we're going to do the same thing. Loosen this up. Lower this back down. Set off right here. Cut this. Line up the registration marks with this one. Let's have it where you want it. Take it back. All right, so we're good there. And the good thing about this is it just has to be somewhere in the ballpark because none of this is going off of these right here, right? As long as it's pretty much centered right there, we're good to go, right? So we're gonna set our off contact on this now. There's our off contact. And then we're gonna tighten that up. We're gonna do our print. All right, so here's our print. I'm gonna have to bring this to the light to see this purple, but it's a dark purple. I'm not really too happy with the way it came out, but I'll run it by the customer, see what they want. You can tell the difference between this and the actual black right there. But like I said, I'm gonna run it by the customer. At the end of the day, it's their decision on what they wanna do. So let me go ahead and send this to the customer, see what they say. All right, so I think um, in the light, this right here is purple just how they wanted it right but whenever you reprinted it on the shirt you guys saw that it was really really dark so what we're going to do is we're going to add some of this white right here we're going to add some white to it so that we can try to lighten it up so we're going to put some drops in there um, don't add too much at one time because what you don't want to do is make it too too light so add some to it And make sure you clean off your 
spatula before you put it back in there. All right, so I'm gonna prop that up there. And as you can see, we have our white in there. So what we're gonna do is start to mix this. All right, so here's our new purple. It's not as dark as it was. I'm gonna do another test print with this new stuff. We're gonna do our blue. Our blue is good. No problems with our blue. Straight out the can, or straight out the container for the blue. Quick one. Then we're gonna bring our next color around, which is gonna be the new purple. All right, so here's our new purple. It's not as dark as the last one. There's our new color. So if you look right here, I cleaned this off right here just so that I could see the print underneath it. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna readjust this off contact to get it all the way back down so it sits on top of the print. Alright, and then once you've got it in place, we are going to do our test print. Before we do our test print, I want to grab some tape like this. I'm going to cover up this down here, and I'm going to do the same thing with this up here. This one up, like that. And this one, just like that. Right, so what this is going to do is whenever I do this print, I'm going to be able to see if this is lined up. If not, we can just wipe it away. All right, so I'm not too worried about this print down here. It's more of lining this up right here. If this is lined up, that's going to be lined up down there. Right, so I'm not even going to print that. I shouldn't even have put tape. So we're going to go ahead, adjust our off contact again, lock it into place. All right, so there's our test print. Our test print is good. Right, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and take this tape off. So now that I got the tape off, I'm going to go ahead and do my print. Right, so there's our purple now. Flash it real quick, not too long. Roll it out. See how it just stuck because I didn't have nothing down here. Um, but this looks good. So we're gonna take this off, flash it real quick. There it is, it looks good. See, this is what I was talking about, registration marks. Make sure you tape them off. There's one of them over here, got a little bit of ink. And got right there, I'm not sure how. But there's our print, it looks good. We got the purple, the blue, everything on this print looks good. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna send it to the customer one more time. Once they give me the okay, we'll start printing. The customer has approved the artwork. So what we're gonna do is I'm going to put music on it here in the shop because it's really, really quiet. So while I'm doing that, I'm going to speed through this process um, and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put some music on for you guys. All right. So, all right. So let's go ahead and start printing.
so that's it. I just want to take you through the process of how I do a three color job. All right, so like I tell you guys in all my videos, this is the way I do it. Everybody has their own way of doing things. This is just the way that I do it. All right, so if you like the video, make sure you leave a thumbs up. If you didn't like it, leave a thumbs down, but leave a reason down below why you didn't like what you didn't like, right? All right, and then as you can see behind me, we have who I call Mr. MT1501 back there from Racoma. So I want to say thank you again to Racoma for reaching out to me. Uh, I'm not going to BS anybody and tell you guys that I purchased that thing. Racoma, they sponsored me, the MT1501 back there. So I'm excited to add that to what we're already doing here. So I have zero experience when it comes to embroidery. So if you're interested in embroidery and you know absolutely nothing, this is going to be the perfect channel for you because I know nothing and we're going to learn it, right? So we're going to learn that thing back there and we're going to get to stitching. Is that what they call it? We're going to start stitching caps and whatever else we can do. I'm excited to get into it. So um, if you're interested in one of these, uh, make sure you go down below. The link is there. You can sign up and one of the Rakoma reps will get in touch with you. All right, so that's it. Thank you guys to all subscribers. Those of you that are here that aren't subscribed, thank you for taking the time to watch this video. Again, thank you guys for watching. Thank you guys for subscribing. And until next time, keep pressing.